Hi, so I wanted to tell you a really interesting story about the one and only paper so far that I have published in Theory of Computation. So go back a few years to when I was a grad teaching assistant for my advisor at the time, Charles Coborn. So at the time he came up with a bunch of questions for a homework assignment for the undergraduate intro Theory of Computation class. And what I did was I created solutions for them. What I did was I went through the homework and it was pretty easy to do. I solved all the problems except the last one. The last one seemed actually very difficult. So what was that problem? It was this problem. So I'm going to consider a language here and I'm going to call it X, uh, L sub X equal Y. And here X and Y are strings. So these two are strings. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider all strings that have an equal number of x's and y's in them. So the, formally what this is saying is that we're looking at all strings w in some alphabet star such that the number of x's in w equals the number of y's in w. So that's the language setup. So given two strings, we can form this language, which is all the strings that have the same number of x's and y's. So let's just do a few examples here. So a simple example is when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. And it's exactly the same, of course, if I swap x and y, it's totally symmetric here. So here, this is saying, uh, depending on the alphabet, that we have the exact same number of zeros and ones. So w in sigma star, such that the number of zeros in W equals the number of ones in W. And of course that that is not regular, so this is not regular. But another one you could consider is X equals zero, zero one, sorry, Y equal one zero. And it's actually important for this one what the alphabet is. So in this case, the alphabet is gonna be zero one. So just the character zeros and one. So that language is just copying the pieces over. So it's all the strings in this thing star. So it's that the number of zero ones in W equals the number of one zeros in W. And it's pretty easy to show that this thing is regular because effectively, because the alphabet is zeros and one, we effectively are gonna have a bunch of zeros and then a bunch of ones. And it must start and end with the same character if the number of one zeros and zero ones is the same, that the number of times it switches back and forth has to be a, an even number. But if we switch this over to uh, the alphabet being uh, zero, one, two, and we, and we form the exact same language, then this thing is not regular. And the reason for this is that if you choose the string zero, one, two to the P, two, one, zero to the P, or something close to that, then you can show that you can pump out of the language here because they have the two separating them, the, the ones and zeros. So given the setup, what was the actual homework question? The homework question is uh, for what X and Y is L X equal Y regular? So clearly it's uh, re not regular in some cases. It is regular in some cases. If we have a different alphabet, we could potentially switch between regular and not regular. And I don't think you can go into regular. You can only go away from regular, but that's beside the point. So clearly this is actually a very difficult problem because I couldn't solve it. So I went to my advisor at the time and I asked him, hey, how do you actually solve this? And he, we thought about it for a minute and he thought he had a potential way of solving it, but it wasn't totally obvious. So one thing that you can do is that it's, it is regular if X is contained within Y. So, uh, so let's say if we have like X equals zero and Y equals zero one, then if we have an equal number of X's and Y's, then every time we see a zero or whatever X is, we must see the rest of Y. And, and so that, that's pretty approved. So effectively, we just need to see, uh, we need to see a bunch of Y's. So anytime we see an X, we must see the rest of Y. And that's pretty easy to do if you have fixed strings X and Y. So we fix X and Y at the beginning, and then we ask which, when is the case that it is regular. So it's actually a very difficult problem. And 
my advisor didn't actually know the solution. So what we did was um, we asked for specific X's and Y's for which it's regular. So like zero, one, this one, we asked like zero and zero, zero, one or something. So we gave specific examples, not the general case, which seemed a lot harder. So what he recommended me to do was to talk to one of the experts in the area, Jeffrey Shallot. And what we did was I asked him, hey, how do you solve this problem? Do you have a reference on how to actually uh, prove what X's and Y's are making this language regular? And he didn't know because apparently this problem has never been studied before. It seems like a very la logical question because we ask these types of things all the time in theory of classes, but this apparently was never studied. So over the next few months, we actually solved the problem. We figured out exactly which X's and Y's um, have it be regular. So there are actually several things that we proved. I'm not gonna go over them in gory detail here, but some of the results that we showed were that, um, so the first one is that this language is always uh, deterministic context free. And that's pretty easy to see because if you see, you effectively just keep track of a certain uh, length of characters that you've seen before. And then whenever you read another character, the, the counts for X and Y either go up or down by one, and you use the stack to uh, take care of that difference over time. And it's actually pretty easy to do once you work through the details. And so, the, but going back to the original question, when is it actually regular? It's actually a very, very nice um, uh, answer. So that it is regular, if and only if, uh, X is interlaced, and I'll define what that means in a second, by Y, or Y is interlaced by X. And, and that, that's the if and only if condition. So if this thing is regular, then one of these two must happen. And if one of these two happens, then it's regular. So we have a necessary and sufficient condition for which it's regular. So what does interlaced mean? It means that if we look at this condition, so X is interlaced by Y. So we take any string at all. So take a really long string. And what we have is that Y is at the beginning and the end. So it's all the way shifted at the beginning, all the way shifted at the end, the same Y. And if X is contained in there, so if X is contained within any word at all, so any string where Y bookends the string and X is in there somewhere, then therefore X is interlaced by Y. So that's what it means. So going back to what I was saying before, so let's say we have like X equals zero, Y equals zero, zero, one. So if we have, let's say zero, zero, one, and then something else, and then zero, zero, one here, then clearly X is contained in this string. It's, it's in several places. So therefore, uh, this language is regular where X is equal to Y. And let's look at the case where X equals zero and Y is equal to one. So if we look at the case where X equals zero and Y equals one, well, if we have a string that's like one, one, then Y bookends the string, but X is not appearing in here, and so therefore it's not regular. Now let's look at the case of where we had that zero, one, and one, zero discrepancy based on the, the, based on the alphabet. So if we have X equals zero, one, Y equals one, zero, then if we have Y being at the beginning and the end, so something like this, then no matter what happens, even if this is as small as possible, if the alphabet is zero and one, then there's no possibility for zero one to not appear anywhere because uh, either the zero appears right next to this one, which it obviously can, or if we have some other stuff in here, it must either be all zeros, in which case there's a zero next to the one, or it goes back to one, in which case there's a zero one in there. And so therefore that works for this case. If we have uh, the alphabet being zero, one, and two, then what we can do is say one, zero, two, one, zero. Then this string uh, does not have X in it because this two is intersecting in between. 
And so therefore, in this case, that's the reason why that language was not regular. You can prove it via the pumping lemma, but this gives a different proof that it is not regular. So this proof is actually very accessible. So if you've taken the intro theory class, you will understand this proof completely. And I provided a link to the paper into the, into the description. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this paper into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy.